everybody. A good Monday morning to you. I'm Skylar Callen here on Between the Ears, a show here on Mountaineers Now, a SI Fan Nation channel. And I, I've got to admit, you know, we've, we've talked a lot of basketball, a lot of football here in Between the Ears. And obviously, Chris and Julia, they provide you with the baseball, uh, the weekly baseball update. But I, I got to I gotta drop my two cents on this because, I mean, what West Virginia is doing is remarkable. I mean, 33-11, and 11, they've won eight straight games. They just come off of a sweep against TCU and then follow that up with a sweep of Baylor on the road. Again, Baylor, they're having a rough season. They're dead last in the Big 12 Conference. But this is kind of where you see legitimate teams uh, start to kind of gain some momentum. When you get a big sweep like they did against TCU, you kind of go through you know, ride the high, emo the emotional highs of that. And then the following week, you go on the road to the, the team that's dead last in the Big 12 Conference. It's easy to kind of to get your focus at a different level or, or a lesser level because of who you're playing. You play down to the level of your competition. And sometimes teams trip up and they lose a game. Or sometimes maybe even lose the series. And for West Virginia, it was nothing but pure dominance, especially on Sunday with the 18-4 to four win. And it starts to, to – it really began, you know, I think, a couple of weeks back when this this bullpen really started to kind of find itself, uh, even though Blaine Traxel has been pretty much lights out for the ma majority of the year, uh, the Saturday starter, he's kind of gone through it here in two or – I want to say two of his last three or two of his last four starts. But the bullpen's been good. And that's a big part of it. But I think now in, in college baseball today, it's almost like everything else with football, basketball. It's it's an offensive game. And I think that's why this West Virginia team has an opportunity to not only get in, into the Big 12 Conference Tournament and make a run and potentially host a regional, but I think they could be a team that makes a super regional and does some damage there because of how potent this offense is. You have the third best hitter in the entire country in J.J. Weatherholt, who, oh yeah, by the way, has 11 home runs now and 30-plus stolen bases. I mean, the kid is phenomenal. Five-tool athlete. I've said it a million times on Twitter, and I'll say it on here. Future first-round pick. And if he's not, then I, I don't know. Because I, I this kid has been so consistently great that I, I don't see how he would not be a first round pick. But again, he's not he's not eligible for the draft this year. He will be back next year, and then he will be eligible uh, to be taken the uh, next next summer. So, West Virginia fans, buckle up! It's about to be a very very fun finish to this season, and then also again with Weatherholt coming back next year. Uh, it, it, it could be a very good two seasons here in Morgantown for West Virginia baseball. And I give a lot of credit to Randy Mason, man. I mean, this guy does not get the credit that he deserves. And to be honest with you, probably should be coach of the year in the entire country. Not the Big 12, the entire country. Look at what this guy has done. He doesn't get the, the top players in the country, but he goes out – find some gems in the portal like Blaine Traxel, Landon Wallace. Like, nobody was going after these kids. I mean, I mean there, there may have been a few, but these kids weren't highly touted when they came out of high school. That's why they ended up where they did. And, you know, you know, Landon Wallace comes from Nevada, Traxel from Cal State Northridge, uh, Dane Leonard a couple of years ago from Virginia Tech. And, you know, they, they have a couple of other guys too. But, I mean, it's just – it's been phenomenal. The, the, the development that has gone on in this program, and it goes all the way back to Alec Manoa. It goes back to, you know, I would even say that right now with Tevin Tucker, who there for a while just you know, couldn't, couldn't do anything with the bat, and now all of a sudden is putting together a really strong season and is probably developed himself into not only a, a – a draft pick, but a, a decent draft pick. I mean, with his fielding skills and his speed, he was going to be on that that professional or on the MLB radar. But now that the bats come into play, I mean, yeah, he's he's a draft pick, hundred percent. And 
you see just what this team has done with the bats, Colin McNeely, another transfer. Like this, this lineup from top to bottom, I mean, they can produce at a very high level. And what we've seen in years past from Randy Mays, these teams is like, okay, let's play a little bit of small ball. We'll rely on the pitching staff, especially our Friday and Saturday guys to get the, you know, six or seven innings to, to put you in a good position to win. But now it's, you combine that with a offensive lineup that's got a ton of power and a ton of, you know, punch in that bat where it's not all small ball. They will still play small ball. They can still steal, still steal bases. They can bunt. They can do all that stuff. They do a lot of the hit and runs and everything. But this team can hit the ball into the gaps and over the fence. And that's what makes this thing exciting. And this week, West Virginia's midweek game, backyard brawl against Pitt at Mon County Ballpark, looking to go for their ninth straight win. And it, this is this is a special time if you're a Mountaineer fan or a Mountaineer fan uh, or, or a fan of the uh, baseball program because – it doesn't look like this thing's slowing down anytime soon. Pitt's kind of having a down year. And this is, a, again, a great chance to get that ninth win, go into this weekend series uh, in, in Big 12 play. You're in first place in the Big 12. If you win that series again, you, you're really kind of starting to, to put yourself in a good spot for that Big 12 regular season title, which is very important to get that number one seed in the Big 12 conference tournament. So... Um, uh, I, I gotta give it again. Hats off to, to Randy Maisie. He has done a phenomenal job with this club. You know, obviously doesn't have the ability to, you know, the he doesn't have the NI pool that some of these other schools have, right? He's not gonna to land the same guys, the Florida States, the Floridas, uh, the LSUs, the Mississippi States, you know, even the Texases of the world or the Texas Techs of the world or UCLA's or uh, Cal State Fullertons or anything like that. He doesn't have that. Uh, he doesn't have that history. Or, you know, he has the history here, but West Virginia baseball as a whole doesn't have the history that those schools have. What he has done with this program is unprecedented. I mean, just think about what this this program was like before he got here. Hadn't been to, I believe, even the college baseball tournament. I think the last birthday had was 1996 if that before he came I can't remember if that's 100% correct but regardless it was a long long time and now you're starting to see where this could be almost a yearly thing and I think the COVID year kind of put a little bit of a a, a road bump in the way but now they're kind of back on track again they're going to make the tournament this year potentially host you get JJ Weatherholt back next year that's going to set up for another good season next year while some of these other younger guys are starting to kind of learn, uh, you know, from, from the experienced guys. And by the time that this crop of guys, these crop of players will be gone. Those younger guys will be ready to step in their shoes and pick up right where they left off. And I'm telling you right now, the, the young arms that are in this system are really, really good. And I, I think they're going to have a chance to, to be one of the better pitching staffs, not only the Big 12, but maybe in the country here in a couple of years. And if you can combat that with yet a very strong offensive lineup again, I mean, th this team is going to be very good for, for a very, very long time. And I think West Virginia fans need to, to understand this now. Like West Virginia baseball, it, it's a fun product. And it could be, I, I'll go ahead and say this right now. Yeah, you know, I, I love what Bob Huggins has done in the portal. I love um, kind of the uh, the outlook of that team. And, you know, I think that he's going to do a really good job here in the next three to four years. But this baseball program might be – or it might have the chance to be the most consistently good program inside West Virginia University because of Randy Mays. The way he gets talent and develops it and finds these little hidden gems out of nowhere. I mean, it, it's it's incredible. So again, West Virginia 33 and 11 on the season, 11 and 4 in Big 12 conference play. They sit at the very top of the conference standings. They host Pitt on Wednesday. 
uh, and then they get back into Big 12 play this weekend. So make sure if you have a chance, get out to the ballpark. West Virginia going for their ninth straight win, and it's the backyard brawl. So why not show up for it? <laughs> so uh, that's going to be it for today's show. But on between the ears. I'm Scott Lacallan. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube at Mountain Years Now and follow us on Twitter at Mountain Years Now as well. No show tomorrow because we're going to have relatively sports with Eugene Napoleon and his special guest, former West Virginia running back K.J. Harris. He's going to talk about, yes, that 337-yard game he had against East Carolina and uh, about how that, that performance came out of it. What was it that ticked him off? He's going to unload that story tomorrow here on Mountaineers now. So check it out. Relatively Sports with Eugene Napoleon uh, featuring KJ Harris. So we'll be back Wednesday with Between the Ears. Thank you guys for watching and have a good rest of your Monday.